Adrenaline adventures, canoes, headbands, fishing. Seriously, the things I have to put up with. <laughs> Not only did I bring him, he's taking it easy on me compared to these two. We need some comedic <laughs> relief from somewhere. <laughs> oh. Remember who oh. got you into this mess. <laughs> it's only a 300 meter portage. And again, like I said earlier in the video, we're double carrying our portages. And all that means is we're taking two trips down the portage, which is not the most efficient way of doing things, but obviously allows you to take more gear. What's going on, little man? Oh, hi. And this trip's not meant to just go absolute minimalist. So I'm with my son and some friends and we want to have some creature comforts. So, uh, you know, for example, me and Griff, we took our four person tent instead of a two person tent. We got more food. We got some fresh food that's frozen that we're gonna cook up. We got our chairs. We got, uh, I don't know, just a lot of stuff that, there's a few things we could have left out, but some luxury items, you know? Every spring trout fishing trip is the excited, most exciting one of the year because you've been waiting all winter to get out. And uh, spring didn't cooperate this year, believe it or not. Ice out, which means all the ice is melted from the lake and you can drive a boat down the lake. Um, was pushed back till, I think it's pushed back to Tuesday, which is uh, I think the 15th. And it hasn't happened since the 90s. So it really screwed up a lot of people's trips. Luckily, uh, we're gonna be okay, but we had to come in from a different access point. So we had to change that part of things, which could be a blessing in disguise because there's more paddling and less hiking. And uh, not everybody likes portaging, so. It's been good. My new canoe is super light. I got the uh, Swift Prospector. It's in a carbon fusion tech stream pack. It's just like my pack boat. And uh, it's making the portages a lot easier. I'm loving it so far. Nice, well done. Yeah, right. that's a beauty. Wes, this way, buddy. Oh, that's perfect. Mr. Hicks, over here. Awesome, <laughs> yes. Mr. Hicks, over here. Number two for the day. All right, here yeah. we go. Beautiful. We got out on the water at 10 a.m. It's now 11.04, and as you can see, dinner is already in the boat. So. <laughs> that's efficient. So I think we found the spot, and uh, this is one of my favorite times, eh, Bill, Wes? Yeah, absolutely. To be able to just pull off. Um, when we go fishing for the day, we bring our lunch, and if we're caught uh, 
in bad weather or quite frankly we're just out all day and we're hungry and we've been fishing um, just pull off to any shore in this particular lake you'll never come across a beach or a real clear area so we've had to find a spot to pull up the canoes tie them off we come up uh, 20 yards here off the shore find a nice place to sit and uh, enjoy just a relaxing lunch and in the middle of the wilderness there's no campsite there's no electrical outlets no. there's nothing it's just you've just carved your own little place out in the wilderness and have some lunch with some friends and you my son and it's a uh, it's a fantastic time we got fish in the boat already looking forward to dinner and we're looking forward to dinner yeah absolutely all right <laughs> right because then we, otherwise we're, we're canoeing all the way from here and that's yeah. a day there and so what are we looking at so bass, brook trout, lake trout, whitefish, yellow perch. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Take them all. All yeah. of the above. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so it's 2.30 and we're just finishing up our lunch. But I also want to cover off that um, we followed the shoreline down to where we are because um, leaving late afternoon, the water was uh, picking up. The wind was picking up and the water was starting to get a little rough, but um, we trawl we tried to follow the shoreline where it was calm, where the wind was coming from behind us. And of course up here it switches, the wind switches a lot. So you got to make a point to be very careful if you plan on crossing a big body of water um, in the morning and think you're going to be able to cross it later on that afternoon, um, you could find yourself stuck on that shoreline. So we're here, but uh, we know that we can uh, hug the shoreline on the way back, we're not that far from camp. It's certainly something to keep in mind. We've ran across people who were stranded on the other side of a lake years ago who had to create a shelter to spend the night there. So, something to think about. All right, buddy, what do you got going on there? Well, on this one, it's uh, just a little simple all purpose flour with a blackening spice. And blackening spice is pretty well any southern style spice. It usually has a little mix of sugar, cayenne pepper, sometimes celery seed. Um, you know, and they're all individual mixes. Um, I picked one, mine up online somewhere and I can't even remember what it was, but I made a jar of it and I've been using it for a while. So I just mix that with a little bit of all purpose flour. That way when we're done, we got a nice lightly coated. Nice. But it's got a little bit of spice, a little heat, so I think it'll go good with the chili. And this one is the, uh, this what? is literally Miss Vicky's potato chips put into a food processor, crushed up, and add a little bit of dill. So you've got a mix of potato, salt, and vinegar, and dill. So we're mm. going to end up with a potato encrusted brook trout with uh, flavored with vinegar, dill, and salt. Like you can't. You can't make it any better. This is fine dining. This is great restaurant food. I'm telling my wife I'm roughing it. What? This well, is not roughing it. Shh. All you people watching, don't tell her. <laughs> Those are some big fillets. They are. Let's get our food barrel down to get our chili out. That's right. Potato, yeah. Salt and vinegar is very mild. Yeah, that's but good. You can really taste potato. Awesome. It's nice. Thanks, buddy. So it's time for some port, and we got to discuss what we're going to do for the rest of our trip. Let's drop some chocolate. So this uh, trip was altered a little bit when we uh, planned. The spring was late, so. We had to make some changes on the fly. 
And like anything else, you know, we, you make the best plan, you think what's right at the time. So many variables, the weather's been great. But after two days of portaging and a lot of uh, tough canoeing up tight creeks and that sort of stuff, we, we here, we found a nice campsite. And we realized, you know what, let's stay here and then we'll see what the fishing's like. Well, half an hour, we got two moss trout in the boat. So check off the uh, fishing being good on the checklist. So I think we might stay one more night here and then we're gonna make break camp and we're gonna uh, make our way down we're kind of doing a loop and uh, we're gonna uh, make our way down this lake and set up camp at another uh, shop we're gonna look at the maps tonight and discuss it over uh, some port and a nice campfire <laughs> We're out fishing right after dinner. The lake is beautiful. This is our third fish on in about half an hour. <laughs> it is a decently big one. Oh yeah, this one's a good one, buddy. Okay, yeah, take it, take her slow, buddy. Take her slow. You're reeling in nice and slow. Give him some time. Yeah, keep, keep the right tip down a little bit lower than that. And you just, okay, now it's nice and slow, nice and slow. Once he gets to the boat, he's going to get a little scared. Oh, yeah. Ooh, another, another good size one. Look at that. 